Hey everybody, and welcome to the fifth episode of the Level Creation Guide for Half-Life. In episode three, we learn what an entity was and use them to make lights, enemies, weapons, and a player start. Then, in episode four, we learned about function entities and use them to build doors, breakable and non-breakable glass, and alpha transparent texture walls. In this episode, we are going to continue to learn about entities, but a vastly different type of entity called the trigger entity. What are trigger entities? Trigger entities are a group of special entities that react to the player's touch. The trigger entities are all different, but for starters, the most basic trigger entity is called the trigger once entity. It is a very simple entity. It is an invisible block that when the player touches it, it will activate another entity to do something. Not too complicated, but all throughout Half-Life, trigger entities are used nearly everywhere, from the most basic things like opening doors, to creating a whole new resident cascade sequence. In this episode, we're not only going to be learning about the Trigger Once entity, but also the Trigger Multiple, Multi-Manager, Ambient Generic, and the Gib Shooter entities. Let's begin by creating a simple Trigger Once entity. To start, I have created a small room with a decal line in the middle. Now, to create a Trigger Once entity, we must build a block and texture it to the AAA Trigger texture. This texture is another of Jack's special textures, and it is used primarily for trigger entities. It will appear invisible, and the player will be able to pass through it in-game. Transform this block into an entity like we did with the function entities, but this time, instead of a function entity, transform it into a trigger once entity and position it appropriately to the decal line. Like stated before, the trigger once entity is the most basic trigger entity. When the player touches this block, it will activate the entity in its target box. Since we haven't entered anything in its target box, it's blank. The only setting that is useful in the attribute section of the entity is the delay in seconds. Leaving this option blank will mean that there is no delay, and we will leave it like that. And remember, since this is a trigger once entity, it will only activate once when touched. Here we go, our trigger once entity is ready. All we need is an entity for a trigger entity to trigger when touched. Let's make this trigger activate a sound using the ambient generic entity. Use the entity tool and create the ambient generic entity. The ambient generic entity is how sound effects and music are played in Half-Life. It has many different settings, but the most important setting is the wave name and plague section. The wave name will allow us to browse through the Half-Life sound directory and where we can actually find the WAV files to choose to play. You can test the sounds by selecting the file and pressing play in the entity browser. There is a lot to choose from. For our example, I went with box and chose great.wave. In the flag section, we have a lots of options to choose from also. Most of the options are self-explanatory, but in our case, the start silent option is the one we need to check. If we don't check this option, it will continuously be playing the sound in game. Now that our ambient generic is all set, all we have to do is name it. I'm going to name it Great01. Lastly, before we playtest, we must add our ambient generic's name into the trigger once entity target box. So when the trigger is touched, it will activate our ambient generic to play its sound. There we go. Press F9 to playtest. Great. Awesome work. As you may feel, trigger entities are not too bad and can be used for a lot of creativity. Let's get more creative and create another trigger scenario, but in this time, let's activate a sound and a wall to break at the same time. For this scenario, let's use a classic half-life trap. I built a small area in the ceiling for a headcrab to fit and sealed it in using a platform. I then transformed this platform into a funk breakable, so when the player crosses the line, it will trigger the platform to break and cause the headcrab to fall in front of the player. Warning. If you create a small area, be sure to create enough room for the headcrab to sit or else you might be seeing this star particle effect indicating the headcrab is colliding with the blocks in game. In order to get our trigger once entity to trigger both the funk breakable platform and the ambient generic entity can be done in two ways. The first way is the fastest and easiest way, which is to simply name both the entities the same name. So when the trigger once activates its target, it will trigger them both as they share the same name. The only downside to this is that they'll both be activated at the same time, giving us no control over the delay between the two. The second way to achieve this is by using the multi-manager entity. 
This entity will not only allow us to trigger both entities at once, but will also put a delay in seconds between each trigger and provide an organized view of what is occurring. Before we continue, be sure to name our Funk Breakable Platform Plat01. To create a multi-manager, use the Entity tool and place an entity and change it to the Multi-Manager Entity. As you will see, the Multi-Manager has only a name option in the Attributes section, but don't be fooled. This entity has a lot more powers than just this. We must access its more advanced options by clicking the Smart Edit button. This button toggles between the simple and more advanced options. There are several options already present in the Advanced Options key value menu, but ignore these as they don't mean anything to us right now. On the right side of the Entity Browser are the Key, Value, Add, and Delete options. This is where we place the entities we wish to trigger into. Let's add Grade 01 first. To do this, press Add and a window will appear with a key box and value box. The key box is where we place the entity's name, and the value box is where we place the delay in seconds. Add the name Grade01 and let's put a 1 in the value box to make this entity be delayed by 1 second. Click OK and it will be added to the key value section. Click Add again and now let's add Plat01 and make it delay by 2 seconds by putting 2 in the value box and press OK. There we go. Now that our entities are placed into the multi manager, all we gotta do is name the multi manager for our Trigger Once's target box. Click the Smart Edit button to go back to the simple menu and change its name to MM01. Now all we need to do is place the multi manager's name MM01 into the Trigger Once's target box. That should be it, and let's try it out in game. Great. Superb job. The last scenario in this episode I'd like to cover is with the Trigger Multiple and Gib Shooter Entities. The Trigger Multiple Entity is almost exactly the same as the Trigger Once Entity. The only difference is with the Trigger Multiple it can be triggered multiple times by the player's touch. In our test level, we can simply change the name of our current triggered entity from Trigger Once to Trigger Multiple instead of remaking the entire block. For this scenario, instead of triggering a breakable and sound, let's make our trigger multiple trigger guts to fall from the ceiling space using the Gib Shooter Entity. The Gib Shooter Entity is an entity that produces gibs or pieces of human innards from an invisible starting point. It's a fun entity and it is used multiple times in Half-Life. Before we create our Gib Shooter Entity, Let's first delete our platform, multi manager, ambient generic, and headcraft from the test level. There we go, we're all set to make our Gib Shooter. To create a Gib Shooter, create an entity and change it to the Gib Shooter. Once created, you will see a purple square, but don't be worried, that's how it looks like in the editor and will appear invisible in game. Place this purple square into the small space in our ceiling. The Gib Shooter Entity has many options we can change in its Attribute and Flag section. All these settings are very important and can significantly alter how our Gib Shooter works. First, let's edit our Yaw Compass setting to Down, so our Gib Shooter will shoot downwards from the small space in our test level ceiling. The number of Gibs is how many Gibs the Gib Shooter will spawn in total. The delay between shots controls if all Gibs are all shot at once, or how long in seconds each gib is shot individually between each other. Gib velocity is how fast the gib is shot. Higher the number, faster it will be shot. Course variance is how large of a radius the gibs will fall onto. And the gib life is the time in seconds until the gib will disappear once fallen. Here's the settings I've used for our test level on screen. The flag section has only one option and it is an important option we need to select for our trigger multiple to work, which is the repeating option. This will allow our Gib Shooter to shoot multiple times. Let's name this Gib Shooter Gib01 and place its name into the trigger multiple's target box. Lastly, change the delay before reset option in the trigger multiple to 1 so we can re-trigger our entity every second. Now let's test this out in game. Congratulations, you learned the basics of the trigger entity.
Thank you so much for watching the video. I apologize about the wait, and I hope to see you next time as we'll be learning about outdoor environments in the next episode of the Limo Creation Guide for Half-Life.